Let's take a look at these important characteristics of grammar that teachers should know. One is the distinction between descriptive and prescriptive. A descriptive grammar tells us how sentences are made by real people as they use the language. It would have a description such as the sentences are made from these parts, a person, the verb, and then the noun phrase. That's a descriptive statement. It says how sentences are put together. In contrast, we often work with prescriptive grammar. Prescriptive rules are like this example. When you write a sentence, you must include these parts, a person, a verb, and a noun phrase. Prescriptive rules usually have the modal auxiliary must or should in them. They tell students what rules there are that they should be following. We work with both types of grammar when we're teaching English to international students. Even though English language teachers work with both descriptive and prescriptive grammars, some people like to describe the difference between these two groups by saying that the linguists write descriptive grammar. They are doing the research on the language that is actually used, and English teachers enforce prescriptive grammar rules. English teachers are there to tell students what they should do. This is a pretty black and white view of the world, where linguists are doing the research with the descriptive grammars, and the teachers are enforcing rules. In reality, we work with both descriptive and prescriptive grammars, but we should know the difference because it is an important one. The distinction between explicit knowledge and implicit knowledge is extremely important for teaching. Explicit knowledge means that you have the knowledge you need to talk about language, so you can say things like, sentences have verbs, a statement that we could make about language. It is used to talk about language, and so it's called meta-language. Meta means above or outside of language, so the word verb itself is an example of meta-language. Second, there's implicit knowledge. That's the knowledge that's used when we produce and understand language. People can say, I bought a cake, I ate a tasty cookie, or I like pie. All of those sentences can be said without being able to name which word in the sentence is a verb. You can use language knowledge without having explicit language knowledge to talk about the language. The distinction between form and function is also very important. Form refers to the rules for creating the structure of sentences. For example, a noun phrase is created by putting together a determiner, an adjective, and a noun. I put the determiner and adjective in parentheses because those are actually optional. You can have a noun phrase with just a noun. So a phrase like a tasty cookie is a good noun phrase. It has all of those parts in that order, whereas cookie tasty a uh, is not a good noun phrase according to those rules of form for a good noun phrase. Function, in contrast, refers to the rules for using language to get things done. If you want a tasty cookie, you need more than a noun phrase. You need to be able to say, I want a tasty cookie. You also need to be able to say, I want a tasty cookie in the right time, in the right place, to the right person, in order to make the function of the meaning of that sentence actually get you a cookie. That's the function of language, its ability to get new things.